Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Express. I'm Nina Gopal. This is the new Indian Express's weekly interaction with experts where we analyze the impact of developments in our backyard, on our neighborhood, on India. Do click on the new Indian Express website and tweet and follow Global Express. So today we're looking at what is definitely turning into one of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's biggest diplomatic challenges in recent times. What must India do now? We have eight former Indian naval officers, two ex-Navy captains, five commanders, and one sentence, one sailor, all sentenced to death last week for espionage by a court in Doha in, in the Gulf country of Qatar. The case has sent shockwaves across the country. They've been under arrest since they were detained in August uh, 2022, which is uh, 15 months ago. And the verdict was pronounced not in a country that India has a confrontational relationship with, as it does with Pakistan, where Kulbushan Yadav, another former naval officer, uh, faces the death end sentence for espionage. This is with Qatar, a Gulf nation where over 700,000 Indians work and live as law-abiding citizens. A Gulf nation that is India's biggest supplier of natural gas. We've built five gas terminals to import LNG and LPG from Qatar through the Indian government company Petronet LPG. Our bilateral trade stands at about $15 billion. Talking us through this maze of questions on what lies ahead and what India should be doing to uh, for, the, for the jailed Indians who have been said to be training the Qatari Navy, and whether we have actually used enough of our diplomatic heft to uh, get them, uh, you know, some kind of leeway is former Ambassador K.P. Fabian, who served in Qatar. He was posted to Tehran during the Iranian Revolution. He was the coordinator for the evacuation of over 170,000 Indians from Iraq and Kuwait during the first Gulf War in 1990-1991. He's an author. He's a columnist. His last book was on the Arab Spring. And now it almost looks as if the Arab, that uh, we're in the throes of another cataclysmic meltdown in the Arab world, an Arab sort of Armageddon, so to speak. Welcome, Ambassador Fabian. Before we ex explore the key question on whether we have have or haven't done enough uh, for these uh, for these eight men, let me name them. There's Captain Navtej Singh Gil, Captain Saurabh Vashisht, Commander Purnendu Tiwari. Captain Birendra Kumar Varma, Commander Sugunakar Pakala, Commander Sanjeev Gupta, Commander Amit Nagpal, and Sailor Ragesh. Our deepest sympathies, we stand with you. So let's begin with you, Ambassador Fabian. Would you like to tell us as a diplomat whether we've done enough? Uh, you know, to uh, was this was this sentence by a Qatari court a lower was it a huge shock? Was it expected, unexpected? Well, are you there? Okay. So your question is whether we have done enough. Well, my answer is in two parts. One is that in such matters, the Ministry of External Affairs might consider it prudent not to tell the whole world, you know, about all that it has done. It, there has to be some discretion. But having said that, my guess is that we have not done enough. Let me explain. You know that uh, our vice president was uh, in Doha in June this year? Yes. All right. Now, this matter was not taken up, at least as far as the media reports go. It was said that it was a brief visit and there was no time. Well, However brief the visit is, this matter should have been uppermost in our mind. I agree. And a vice president should not have gone there unless he wanted to and he could have taken it up. Okay. Absolutely. That's point number one. Now, at that time, if you remember, there was uh, much concern in Qatar about some statements made by a BJP spokesperson, Nurup Sharma. Nupur Sharma, yes. My apologies for not getting her name right. That's okay. She made statements which should not have been made. Point. Absolutely. And Qatar was annoyed 
And if you remember, the Indian ambassador was summoned even while yes. the vice president was in town. There is also the story of uh, the Amir's uh, not hosting a lunch for the vice president. That's right, it was cancelled. Yeah, you know, there again, there is a little need for nuance. Mm. Before the vice president left, there was an agreed program. Mm -hmm. And that agreed program, there was no lunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was there in yeah. the draft program earlier. So but, you're basically you're basically saying that you know despite the good trade relations and the fact that you know we make up the majority of the expatriates who live in uh, in the Gulf in that Gulf country, uh, our relations have not been exactly smooth since in the last year or so. No, let me let me sort of uh, go, uh, make this point. So at that time we invited the Amir to make a state visit to India. That was a smart mm. move. Now, mm. as far as I can understand, I can understand the Qataris uh, thanked us for the invitation, but mm. showed no alacrity in fixing the dates. Mm. In other words, mm. a clear signal that the Amir was not going to come in the immediate future. Therefore, now here comes where I think we have failed. Therefore, mm. it should have been good diplomacy on our part at the time of G20 to invite the entire GCC, all the six members of the GCC. And there, you know that Saudi Arabia doesn't need an invitation. It is a member of G20. Now, we invited only UAE. Mm. Now, on the other hand, if we had invited all of them, and, you know, in such matters, sometimes you even send a, a special envoy to carry the invitation and all that, you know. If uh, the host governments are used to such protocol, just observe it. You know what I mean? It's a question of uh, doing in Rome what the Romans do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. we had done that, the Amir would have certainly come for the G20. And that was a time when Prime Minister Modi and the Amir could have had a, you know, a conversation. One to one. And we could have made progress. You know what I mean? That was a major. Well, in my opinion, major fault on the part of Ministry of External Affairs. I, I, I think we should we tend to we will agree with you, Ambassador Fabian, because there was there does seem to have been a major time lapse or a, almost as if it wasn't a top priority. Ambassador Fabian, if I can get you in uh, on that point, what do you think the steps would be that the Indian government should initiate? I mean, they've sent the uh, former Indian ambassador of to Qatar, Deepak Mittal. Uh, back to Qatar to, uh, you know, plead the case, uh, uh, cause, I presume, of the uh, of the sailors. Uh, what do you, do you think it should come from a higher level? Because, I mean, Mr. Jai Shankar has also visited Qatar. Uh, you know, and what can Deepak Mittal do? Is it a one-on-one, -on -one, a one-to-one -one with, you know, which, uh, which, I mean, he probably knows people in Qatar. Is that why he's been sent back? Yeah. Uh... Before I answer that question, I want to clarify one or two matters. Yeah. You must have seen the statement by the naval chief the other day. Yes, yes. He's waiting for the translated transcript from MEA. Mm. In other words, Indian Embassy had appointed a legal team. We mm. didn't that the legal team knows, knew their Arabic. And there were seven hearings. Oh, not three. Starting from March. Okay. And obviously our legal team would have told our embassy what was happening. So yeah. to give the impression that the trial was absolutely opaque and all that is incorrect. And secondly, this is not the occasion, best occasion to find fault with the Qatari legal system. We mm. have to be prudent. You know, we got very tough with Canada. <laughs> and I think it yeah. was foolish. I think it was it's, foolish. Now that's here, blown up in our face, you're saying. In a coming to, an, to answer your question, I would say that we have four options. Mm. One is follow the legal process. There's a court of appeal. And mm -hmm. some time back, 
that court of appeal reduced life imprisonment a death sentence awarded to a filipino for espionage oh i see no and there were three i let me explain yeah One who was given death sentence was working for qatar Petro general petroleum and the mm -hmm. other two were working for the qatari air force now it seems uh, those two who were working for the Qatari Air Force, they got uh, 15 years or 20 years or whatever it was. What but nationality were the ambassador? Other guy who was working for Qatar General Petroleum because he was a conduit, you yeah. know, passing on the information. He got life's I mean, death sentence in the lower court and the court of appeal amended it to life sentence. In other words, there is reason to believe that Qatar has a system that delivers justice. Mm. Mm. Second, as already pointed out by uh, Mr. Tiwari, we should pursue the diplomatic option. Mm. May have, but we have to pursue it. And he is very right when he says, I mean, one way would have been to send the foreign minister the next day. Yeah. So done. And summon the Qatari ambassador, you know, things like that. This shows activist foreign policy. Okay. Yeah. Not like Sushma Swaraj did. Now, that is one. But uh, my belief is that ultimately we might get relief only by asking for pardon at the level of the Amir. And you cannot ask for pardon when the legal process is still on. I see, I see. So yeah, it's, that's interesting. That's important. Yeah. Our interest to have the legal process concluded as early as possible mm. and make the formal request for a pardon. Mm. Which, uh, I mean, ambassador can make it and all that, you know, but it should be followed up by a summit level meeting, preferably offline between the Amir and the Prime Minister. And the best we can hope for is a pardon at the time of uh, Ramadan next year. That is March. Oh, not even not even Qatari National Day on, on December 18th? This time, that is in December. Uh, as I said, technically the legal process has to be over before you ask for pardon. I mean, imagine President of India being asked to pardon somebody whose case is uh, still being considered by Supreme Court. So, I mean, you know, there are Certain, but ambassador, uh, ambassador, the other problem is that we don't have an ambassador in Qatar. We haven't replaced Deepak Mittal. Well, and I, we've also we also recalled our defense attaché. Apparently, the man who uh, no, we who knows the inner inside story. I mean, I'll get to that inside story in a minute. But uh, don't you think we should appoint an ambassador? Well, I would, I don't want to comment on the obvious. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that is the obvious. Yesterday or day for yesterday, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and is that, is that, is that the final, final you said you no, have four. Minute. No, the last option we have, yeah. which is not the best option, and I don't advise it, is to engage with friendly governments, starting from the United States, to put pressure and on Iran. But I will not advise that, because Qatar would prefer to talk to us and take the matter to the ICJ. Again, I wouldn't advise that. And above all, please remember, Qatar has a young Amir. He is 43 years. And mm. he handled the blockade. Yes, so, he did. And very well. He did, he did. You won't damage indo qatari relations by executing these eight men. No, but we, we also were very good during the blockade, right? I mean, we were, we were the people who actually, uh, you know, um, we, we didn't take part in that blockade of, of Qatar. Of no, we supplied goods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We continue to supply the goods. Uh, you know, I mean, we've all faced it. Whenever we've been, uh, you know, come up against uh, the authorities in, uh, in the Gulf countries, we are actually uh, facing that, uh, you know, that wall of language because, you know, we're, we're, the judgments are pronounced in Arabic. The arguments are made in Arabic. And uh, unless there is a, a immediate legal translation, you are very much in the dark about uh, you know what is actually being said and pronounced. So do you do you think we we have to uh, step up that? I mean, when you were ambassador, what was it like? Must, well, it couldn't have changed that much. 
Well, I mean, uh, you know, many Palestinians and Egyptians were uh, in positions of responsibility without technical knowledge, mm. only because they knew Arabic and our people yes. know Arabic. But that apart, let me once again repeat, the naval chief must have by now got the long, you know, translated translation proceedings. So there yeah. is something on record. Well, I'm not aware of it, but there is something on record. And when the trial started in March 2023, the prosecution would have presented its case. And mm. I'm sure that the legal team appointed by the uh, company, I'm sorry, by our embassy, would know their Arabic. That's <laughs> so, right. Okay. So, You're right. much more there than meets the eye. That's okay. right. That's right. That's, That's right. right. And one so, more point. You mentioned about uh, Mossad and CIA. Now, I do not know, but I find it difficult to take it seriously because America has its biggest air base in Al Udaid Air Base, which we and, have flown out of many and, times. Yes. And America doesn't need uh, all these uh, secret ways of finding out what it, the countries are doing. And it second, doesn't. And secondly, why should Israel be interested? There is no hostility between Israel and Qatar. Are you sure about that? Yes. No, no because, no because there is there is there is a lot not hostility, but there is a lot of sort of question marks over over where Israel and the uh, Palestinians are concerned. Because I mean Qatar for for for, for all uh, purposes does have very close relations with Iran. And Iran does not uh, view the, ri the rise of Israel and the fact that Israel was mending fences and building bridges with the Saudi Arabia and with the UAE and Bahrain and so on. It wasn't viewed at all, uh, you know, and I think Qatar does not uh, view it. Uh, I mean, takes the same view as Iran on that matter. So no, there is that element. There is that element uh, uh, to our relationship. Or plus, India has signed the I2U2 agreement, which I don't think went down well with with uh, Doha either, because you know it sort of propped up India with alongside Israel and Saudi, yes, and the United States, which is which which has a very strong relationship with Doha as well. So there is there are slight uh, you know sort of smudges on that perfect document. There is no smooth sailing there. Well, two points. I will be most surprised if Qatar sends its submarines to the Eastern Mediterranean. <laughs> okay, I don't think there is any question. Second, you see, you mentioned about Iran and all that. Yes. Well, even then, Qatar is not going to, uh, what shall I say, pass death sentences on eight Indians as a response. To what? No, not 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 that. Let, I didn't mean that. Let us not, let us not link things which are not linked. Yeah, but, yeah. And that is very important. That's right. That's right. I don't think it has an it has an impact. But the way that Qatar views India after the ITU two and after uh, the IMAC, the uh, India Middle East, uh, you know, Europe corridor, I do, I'm sure that must have changed the way they look at us. I mean. Qatar I, does see itself as, uh, you know, as uh, an, a, a very leading power in the Gulf. Uh, you know, it doesn't see itself uh, as lesser in any way than Saudi Arabia and the UAE. So I think in that sense, it's, you know, maybe we didn't give it the importance that it deserved or uh, we gave, gave a lot of importance to Saudi Arabia and, and, the, and the United Arab Emirates with due, due reason. A due cause, but the fact that we didn't give that much importance to Qatar must, uh, you know, must not have gone down well with the Amir. I beg to differ in the sense that. Uh, so you're saying that the enormous goodwill that India enjoyed through our soft power, our Bollywood movies, you know, uh, and that that has that there is a there is a question mark now. I think because of our even, uh, I mean, I I don't think it's got anything to do with the sentence. Uh, at all, but we have, I think, shifted our uh, position in the Gulf to a great extent by backing Israel as we have uh, over the Hamas, uh, you know, uh, attack on October 7th. I mean, we've been, we've sympathized with the Palestinians and their plight, but the fact is our Qatar's two arch rivals in the Gulf are Saudi Arabia and UAE. So, you know, the I2U2 may, may have changed perceptions 
in Doha to a great to an extent. And it, it did translate. I mean, it, we did see how the vice president, Dhankar, uh, you know, he did he did get the cold shoulder, so to speak. You know, I mean, we've had in the past, we've had Manmohan Singh visit in 2003. You've had the former Amir visiting. Uh, you've had Modi visiting in 2016. So all of that has been there. Jay Shankar himself has visited Doha several times. But do you think that, you know, this... India Qatar Defense Cooperation Agreement and all of these things, you know, our ships regularly dock in Qatar. All of that has stand, sort of there's a shadow cast over all of that with this judgment. Okay, now first of all, it is a judgment. It's a judicial judgment. It is not a decision by the government of Qatar. Point number one. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yes, you're right. You're right. Point number two. I do not believe that uh, there is going to be imminent execution of these eight Indians. No, I don't think we should sort of uh, create a hysteria. As I said, we have to behave calmly and most smartly diplomatically. Um, our friends. So you, you, so you have support the idea. You support the the, the, the Mr. Jay Shankar's, uh, uh, you know, asking the families not to make a big noise in public about it. Well, I'll tell you that is. Uh, I understand that. I mean, they should. We should not make. Uh, what shall I say? I mean, to put it uh, in plain English, don't repeat what we did with Canada. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, we have to move calmly and smartly. Okay, and l let's see who in Qatar makes the ultimate decision. The Amir. Hmm. Okay, after the court process is over. All right. As I said, I repeat, he is 43. Mm. Very I have uh, heard him a number of times at the Doha Forum. Oh, I see. So you do know him personally. Yeah, and uh, I am going again in December for the Doha mm. Forum. Okay. Mm. Mm. So in terms of diplomatic skills, Qatar doesn't lack anything. Yeah. And doesn't they react, uh, uh, what shall I say, impulsively, oh, ITU too. So we have to do something about it or uh, this so-called uh, India, Middle East, uh, Europe, economic corridor. And Nina, you and I know, these are two ideas originating from Washington to get Saudi Arabia and Israel closer. That's right. Okay, so let us not get too excited about this corridor. Again, the Eastern, Cor I'm sorry, Western corridor might be of some help to us. Yeah. Northern Border Road is less interesting for us because it's better to use the Suez Canal, avoiding too many transshipments. That's right. That's right. Well, it's not, you know, I mean, I'm sorry to say, analysis in the Indian media tends to be shallow at times. Yeah. Yeah. It, because but, because you're fed, uh, fed the story. Yeah. Anyway. Which, 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 so that, yeah. that is what it is. So. As I said, let us be calm, let us use diplomacy and, as necessary, summit diplomacy because it works. And I am convinced that the young Amir is not going to execute these eight people. You I know. hope what you say is, is uh, you know, good, is, will stand you good. Wouldn't, you wouldn't like to damage indo qatar relations <laughs> because if he does, it will damage his relations for a while. Yeah. He, no, it's not in his nature. Yeah, yeah. No, we also have very good relations with Tehran. I mean, you served there at the height of the revolution. You know, I mean, India's, India's invested in Chabahar, even if it hasn't gone anywhere. Don't you think we should use Iran as well? I mean, we have the, we, we don't, we don't, that won't work? No, let me put it this way. Where I cut the, I would like India to talk to me directly. Mm. Talking to me through others, no, I mm. wouldn't. No, respect mm. Qatar. It's a small mm. country, but respect it. Okay, and treat them, and you will get the results. Going through third countries, well, may not work. And yeah. I'm, I'm not sure whether Iran will get involved, unless it has reason to believe 
that it, its inter- intercession will succeed. Iranians... In fact, but Iran gave a very interesting uh, interview the other day, the Iranian ambassador to India. He's actually advocated a bigger role for India in the Palestine-Hamas-Israel uh, con- conflict and basically said that India should use its good offices. I don't know who we have the good offices with, uh, whether they still, Mahmoud Abbas still values us at all uh, is another issue. But on Qatar, I agree. I don't think they would like to have their arms twisted by anyone, whether it is Iran or the US. I think the Amir will have to take a call. And I think we need to reach out uh, to the Amir directly. I mean, he's he's young, he's smart, you know, he's savvy. I'm sure he knows, uh, you know. But but is this, is this kind of, uh, you know, I just want to finally a- a end, if I could, with, uh, you know, the steps that you see, uh, you know, that, you know, with with the with Deepak Mittal and with the defense attaché, do you think we should actually go public with what the charges are, or should we just take it well, on the down down and low? That depends because not having seen the charges, I am not in a position to say anything at all. See, it's like this: in certain matters, we cannot go public, but at the same time, if we don't go public, then rumors will float. So mm. it's a fine judgment, you know, it's, it's a difficult uh, judgment, but uh, only those who are in government can take that judgment, make that judgment. Mm. They cannot, mm. But I can point out the perils in being too opaque, Yeah, perils in being too public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the point that you made about not taking it to the ICJ is also good because it hasn't helped Kulbushan Yadav at all. Not, uh, only that, just... not only that, Qatar will say that these are matters of national security, so we are yeah. not why what happened yeah 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 and don't yeah. forget icj judgments are not enforceable that's right that's the other issue absolutely so this is an added complication uh you know which which nobody expected you know so let's see how it happened how it uh, works out in the weeks and uh weeks to come hopefully there will be some kind of uh you know rapprochement and some kind of breakthrough and uh, a clearer understanding of why these men have been charged and uh, how we can get around that. Uh, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I just want to share with you. I mean, uh, you were referring to the Financial Times, is it? Yeah, uh, that's that's what I saw, yeah. yeah. Okay, I do not know, but I find it a little difficult to fi- figure out, uh, to imagine that uh, Israel would have been engaged in spying. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I want to point out to a possibility. It's on, it is absolute speculation. Mm-hmm. See, we were talking earlier, the only people who might be worried about Qatar's in, in, uh, increasing its naval capabilities with Indian support. Because don't forget, though it's a private company, it is Indian naval personnel who are there. That's right. And and were I Qatari Foreign Secretary, I would have asked the Government of India formally to vet them. Mm, mm. Okay? Not the technical qualifications, but their service record. Yeah, yeah. Any dismine, uh, misdemeanor. Was yeah. there, you know what I mean? And I, exactly. I, I'm sure Qatar would have done that. So the idea that it's a private company, well, it is a private company, but there is much more to it than meets the eye. Okay, mm-hmm. that is, you know, a very important point. And now, Israel has been mentioned. I do not know whether this is to confuse things. Mm-hmm. Only can, uh, state I can think of who might be worried will be UAE. Mm-hmm. It is UAE that has got a maritime border with. Uh, Qatar. Mm, mm, All right. Mm, mm. And Qatar, I don't think has any, you know, bad intentions towards UAE because you know that during the blockade, they were uh, supplying gas to Dubai. That's right. That's right. Nevertheless, now this is absolute speculation or speculation. So Israel wanted to uh, earn brownie points from UAE by doing the spying and mm. telling you this is what is happening suppose i leave it mm-hmm. in. 
That's but, very interesting, Ambassador. But there's also the other speculation that it could be Pakistan because you know the naval uh, our, our former retired naval officers run the ports across the Gulf countries. I mean, you've you've seen it yourself. I mean, in Dharan and Jeddah and you know in Oman and all of that. It's uh, and in Dubai. I mean, I remember Jabal Ali Port when you went in and went out. It was always an Indian, uh, you know, former naval, uh, you know, junior officer definitely who stamped your you know, entry and exit. So, I mean, it is in India, which is actually the backbone of all of these uh, countries, you know, a lot, to a great extent. And I think that is resented by the Pakistan uh, officers, apparently. I mean, this is what somebody uh, said to me, one of the uh, one of the families said to me that it could be Pakistan playing dirty as well. Do you think that's even a possibility? No, I don't. I don't think. I, I think don't, it's. I, I don't think Pakistan has a necessary clout, and I don't think Qataris will fall for that. Yeah, yeah. They have tried. That's not the point. Yeah. I yeah. don't think the Thetis would have taken them seriously. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's hope that the death sentence gets commuted to life and that we've set the meal, wheels in motion to get them safely out of this uh, terrible sentence and maybe get them home probably by Eid next year. Thank you very much, Ambassador Fabian, for coming on the show. Thank you, viewers, for watching. Please do click on the Global Express icon on the New Indian Express website and keep watching Global Express. Thank you.